Oh, hi guys, and welcome to this, the Crockhead Retopology time lapse. And you can see here that this is the wireframe on top of the mesh. So getting started with a decimated mesh, this would ordinarily be from ZBrush, but in this case, I had done the model already completed, so I thought I'd just demo it again in 2018 with the new tools. So we are just decimating the, or triangulating the final croc mesh. And coming in here and just the first part of this time lapse is just to sort of scout out all the, the lines, the main lines that we need to have a look at in establishing our topology for this mesh. So that's all kind of the creases and the places in the mesh where it will potentially crease if there's facial animation later. We need to have these lines flowing all in the right places. And usually these are fairly easy to identify. They're usually in the right angle kind of increase areas of your mesh. And you just need to go and sort of plot all those out. But once you know those, and I'll talk about this in the page in a lot more detail, but once you know where those lines are, we just need to sort of come in and start patching all of that together. So here I'm just adding a little bit more resolution to uh, the mouth line. Now the mouth line was the really quite the tricky part of this model because topology likes to sort of go in straight lines, not in these big curvy lines. And what happens when you've got a lot of curves is you, you end up getting a lot of resolution in one area and you need to sort of fan that out and get rid of it for other areas. So that's what makes this a little bit tricky on this particular model. And the Z remesher in ZBrush was failing quite badly on that line and I wasn't getting anything for free at all. So I'll, I'll talk about that more too in the upcoming videos. But here you can see how I'm sort of just having to manually plot this out, get it all working nicely so that we can get the start of that model happening. So there you go, you can see all the lines there. That's quite interesting. I have also put some animated visibility keyframes on the first frames as per the quadral page. You can see how to do that. And that makes it easy to sort of compare between the meshes. So you have the, the sculpt mesh on the first frame, you have both meshes on the second, and then you have the, the base mesh only on the, the third frame. And then you can scrub and very easily get an idea of both meshes and how they're comparing. So Quadraw has improved a lot since 2016. And at the bottom of this page, I will show you guys the original time-lapse of this in 2016 and how it's changed. One of the things that I have chosen to do is go a lot more dense in the topology. Not so worried about keeping the mesh ultra light here. Um, that's because of the newer rigging workflows and the newer skinning workflows and the sculpt tools for blend shapes and things like that. Everything's becoming a little bit easier. So it's a bit easier to handle these higher res meshes in animation now. And of course the, the rig speeds and uh, Maya's handling of polygons has improved quite a lot in terms of animation. So we're able to go a little bit denser than we were before, especially for these sort of personal projects. Usually the feature films were always going quite dense, but nowadays for personal projects, I believe that we can go a little bit denser as well. So this is a denser model than I would have done originally, or I did do originally for the actual croc rig. And just showing it now with the nice, uh, beautiful blue overlay material, which works a lot better. It's so much nicer to use in 2018. However, a few things are slower. For example, the filling of quads, and you can see that when it flashes green, that's when I'm usually filling a quad with a make quad tool. That's quite slow, so uh, you have to break up your meshes quite a lot more now in 2018, unfortunately. And I'm using a lot more sort of drag and split. They seem to be performing quite well in terms of speed, and you don't need to have uh, a super chopped up model in order for that to work. So you really want to get used to cutting up your model into different parts that is extracting and combining and emerging with a vert tolerance of very low, like 0 0.001. And you can see too that I'm only working on one side. So I'm only mirroring at the end once I've sort of finished my topology. That keeps the vert counts down, keeps Quadra responsive. And it also, well, it just keeps Quadra responsive really. It just needs to be fast. So it's much easier to work on one side. There is a symmetrical function of the Quadra, but it is a little bit slow once you get into the higher counts as, you, as I am here. So the other trick with uh, the mirror, as I'm doing here, is to also merge. Make sure you set your merge tolerance to 0.001. I do that in the defaults of my C3DC prefs. The defaults are 0.01, and that's not enough, and it triangulates your models. And I did actually accidentally reset my prefs here somewhere, and I did a little bit of triangulation, which I cut out because it was super annoying, just because I'd set that tool up wrong. So just make sure you got all your, your mirror sort of settings all set correctly. The defaults are not really good enough. So the great part about Quadra is the relax feature. I think that's really where it comes in really strong, that relaxing right there. 
just beautiful, beautiful feature. So you don't have to get all your quads all perfectly aligned when you're cutting in and, and making them. You can actually be quite messy. And then later on, you can come in with your relax tool and really clean it up and it will create this beautiful sort of nice even quad mesh. And even quads are very important for rigging and skinning and texturing and things like that. So you do want to sort of focus on that and get those, especially on these heavier meshes, like a, a higher poly count. We do want to keep those quads looking nice and neat and tidy and that will sort of it gets you to see problems when you're doing your blend shapes and you're skinning later on when you see little bunching and stuff like that the smoothing tools and the skinning will work a lot better and also texturing and things like that you'll see where the uv problems are if your mesh is fairly nice and even so as you're cutting in don't worry too much about that and then you can go over and smooth everything else out as a last pass there so just going through and smoothing everything there and just patching up the errors so what I'll talk about on this page is some things like when you're patching, you know, these lines together that I started with, it can be quite a tricky puzzle. It's a little bit of a 3D puzzle, aligning all those things together and making the, the two different sections link together without adding a ton of more resolution to the parts and keeping the quads as even as you can. So there's a real skill in that. And I'll talk a lot more about that on the page. And I'll also talk about hybrid modeling techniques. Like in this model, the model was almost finished and pretty much complete by the time that I did the quadro, but often I'll be quadroing on a mesh that's not as polished, not as finished, and then you use the, the nice topology that you make and continue to sculpt and improve your model after you've finished. So I definitely did that on the first pass of croc. And you'll see that here in this demo, it looks really nice and neat and tidy. But actually when you're doing this for, for production or you're, you're on a deadline and you need to get this out fast, it can be quite messy workflow. So I know these shoots make it all look nice and easy and these are when we pre-prepare a little bit, but it is a quite a messy workflow. Quadro, it's quite time consuming. This to take about four hours to, to retopologize. And uh, unfortunately, as much as those great auto retopology tools are promising us the world, it's not quite there yet. I've definitely noticed. So here I'm just fixing up with the sculpting tools. So now that we've got this mesh, we can actually continue to sculpt and perfect that model more and more. So that's just a comparison between the base mesh and a final one. And then a render, a quick render. This one was done in Redshift and just showing you the wire overlays at the end there to finalize that. So we'll go through a lot more detail on this page. I hope you enjoy that. It should give you a good overview of the workflow.